So let's preface this by kind of explaining what good, bad, and ugly means, right? Good is going to be a contract I don't have to worry about it for the next five, just three, let's go three to five years where I'm set, I'm happy, I got my quarterback, I can build around this quarterback, and it's not going to hamper me to the point where we're going to start talking about them taking a pay cut next year, moving off them the year after, right? Yeah. Bad means I don't love the contract, but I think we can still salvage it, and I think it has some redeeming qualities to it. Ugly is I don't like anything about it. Who knows where it's going to go? And it's it's a sour situation. So let's go ahead and start. So first one on the list here, we got Daniel Jones and his new contract. This is an easy one for me. This is an ugly. I think I think forty million a year for Daniel Jones is outrageous. Uh, somebody in what was considered their best year through fifteen touchdown passes. Now I know he runs the football, but let's not act like he's actually a dual threat quarterback. It's bad. He's just has good enough mobility to get outside the pocket and move a little bit. Now, I know in some packages, Dable uses him uh, to run the football a lot. So, I mean, he adds, like, what, six rushing touchdowns? So, you're telling me he's got 21 total touchdowns for a what you guys want to say is a dual-threat quarterback? I that That is not enough production. I'm sorry. And I, and I know it's the NFC, and I know not everybody can be Patrick Mahomes, but you have to be a lot better than that. <laughs> yeah. Um. And, 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 like, I've always said, if I got him at 28 to $32 million, I'll be – relatively happy more close to 28 and 32 but i'd be happy paying daniel jones 28 million for the next four years 40 is ridiculous 40 is insanity yeah it, it doesn't make any sense to me uh to me that takes them out of super bowl contention out of nfc contention um borderline out of playoff contention i think they're going to be scrapping and clawing for just the last wild card spot from here on out um, I don't know what you do. You need to completely rebuild this, the the secondary. You need to completely rebuild your your wide receiving core. Who knows how long Saquon's going to be healthy? You might have to go find a running back soon. <laughs> Their offensive line outside of left tackle is a complete mess. Yeah. And now you don't have any money. And to now really you don't have any money to to throw at anything. It looks bad. It looks bad in New York. I don't like it. All right, number two here, Russell Wilson. I'll go bad. A lot of people would say ugly. I'll go bad because I think in terms of being able to fix it, I mean, you have Sean Payton. Yeah. Right. So. What, what you've done so far, since you had the bad year, you said, okay, bad coach, let's realize it soon, let's pivot off that. Great job, right? The problem is when you when you, when you you make a mistake and then you stick with it, right? You, they pivoted off it, you go get the best coach in the market, Sean Payton, love that, right? He has good weapons, he's got two guys coming back from injury that are going to be impact players, Tim Patrick and the, and the running back, Javante Williams, so that's going to help out a lot. They have good, well, they have decent... Um, draft capital right mostly later rounds but you can go get some depth at the interior line which is what they need you can go find a a third linebacker which is what they need so they should be fine i'll go bad because obviously you know giving him a shitload of money when he's not producing is not ideal no yeah but it's fixable to the point where you can be competitive in the afc yeah so not in the ugly category there uh number three here let's go patrick mahomes big contract to me this is an easy one this is good i don't really care what i'm paying patrick mahomes i mean i know that it goes up this coming year. Um, but you, you go look, in three years, this is going to be, uh, I don't know, a top 14. It's going to be like the 13th or 14th contract in about three or four years now. Honestly, so it's yeah. like, so is it going to hurt for the next year or so? Maybe, maybe. But, I mean, what's what's going to be their, their step down? I mean, they have tons of cap space this coming <laughs> year, right? They already cut Frank Clark. They're going to have, which that was a good decision. He wasn't super productive anyway. They're going to have cap space. They have young guys that they're not even paying yet. They got a bunch of cheap labor on the team already. Yeah. There's not a there's not an immediate roadblock financially for this team in the next five years. And then after five years, the quarterback contract is going to be on the f- team friendly side. So for the next five years, they're set. And then after that, it's going to be a team friendly contract. So you can reset with a whole other group of contracts and be just fine after that. So yeah. they're they're set. All right, number four here, Geno Smith. Now this one's interesting. Yeah, Geno, I'm going to go bad because I I don't love just a oh, one good year and, and you and you pay him. And also you go look at you go look at Geno against good teams and Geno against bad teams, and it's a stark difference even in his in his uh, up year last year, right? Like against the Niners, embarrassed. I mean, it was toe to toe against Atlanta at home, right? <laughs> like, so against good teams and against teams that can give him some pushback, Geno's not quite as good. He needs a run game, absolutely needs a run game. When Kenneth Walker went out and teams knew he was going to run or throw the football and they couldn't run the football, it got ugly for Geno. It did. So I, I don't love that side of it. But at the end of the day, he is productive, and it's a. It's a roster that's not super conducive to a 
project type quarterback like a rookie quarterback coming in now if you could draft a levis or a richardson let him sit for two years behind gino that might be better might be might be an idea but that might uh, be better overall um it it's bad but it's not it's not quite ugly yet all right let's go five lamar jackson to me this one's ugly i mean leaks on both sides uh the ravens put a non-exclusive franchise franchise tag on him which is super rare and it basically says yeah, you have permission. Like, while you technically are franchise tagged by us, you're set to get paid by us this upcoming season, you're allowed to go look at other teams and make deals with other teams, and we have the chance to match it. So it's just, it's basically saying, to me at least, it's what it seems that the Ravens are saying, you don't believe us that, that this isn't your actual value? Go test the market, see what it says. Yeah. Right? Like, you you want to tell us that you're worth 200 some million guaranteed? Go test the market. Let's see how it goes. Is anybody else going to give him that? What do you think? Just Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think it's ugly. I think he gets traded. I don't think he plays under the tag. I don't think any team is going to go after him because of what you're going to have to give him guaranteed money-wise and also what you're going to have to uh, give up the two first-round picks. Yeah. So I think eventually he'll get traded. All right. Interesting. Uh, number six here, Derek Carr. Big new contract in New Orleans. I'll go good. Yeah, I'll go good. I am. Um, it, it's borderline. It, it's it's on the lower end of good for sure because at the end of the day, I'd love him for more close to thirty than I would thirty seven and a half. But Derek Carr's been able to to overcome so much in his career that this is the best roster he's had easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Uh, at least in my opinion, uh, you got a really good defense, nice offensive line, good offensive pieces. Kamara's a stud running back. Um, and $37 is not too bad. And also, the division, he's easily the best quarterback in that division. It's yeah. not even a question. No, yeah. And that's probably the best roster today, including him. Tampa's close, but they don't have a quarterback. So, I think it's probably the best overall roster in the division. So, it's good for Derek Carr. All right, last one here. Number seven, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, that's ugly. It's bad. It's bad. I mean, you went and twiddled thumbs in a dark cave or a dark cabin or whatever for four days, and you have... You're not even close to an answer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting a, it's getting ridiculous. The the Packers should rip the bandaid off. And here's what's even worse: if he comes back or if he goes anywhere via trade, they owe him almost sixty million dollars. It's like fifty some million dollars. Really I think against so. the cap, it's like thirty eight or thirty nine. But you owe him a lot of money if you bring him on your team. Yeah, that I can't justify for somebody who's not going to be coming in the offseason. Doesn't really work super well with young receivers. Hey, he's going to hold your franchise hostage, basically. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's an ugly situation for anybody who takes on Aaron's contract. 100% agree. I mean, it has gotten really bad in Green Bay, and I don't see it getting better wherever he goes. So I don't either. It'll stay about the same. I agree. But 